It's been a month since the hostilities in central Bangkok came to an end, leaving dozens dead and many more injured. Also in tatters is Thailand's reputation as a peaceful nation, and that's affecting the tourism industry many depend on. Like Kiwi Mark Doncaster, for the last three years, he and Thai wife Kat have been running a fishing charter business in Bangkok, and they're catching the biggest freshwater fish in the world. This from Robin Jaynes. With it up, keep it up, keep it up, hold it there. Pull on back again. What is that fish? Ah, I think you got a Mekong catfish now. Oh, this is nothing. Wait till you get them close. In the epic battle between boy and fish, at times it looks like the fish will reign supreme. Hard up. <laughs> you got a good fish there because you're starting to run out of line, mate. Lotus and his family have come to Bung Sam Lam, just 15 minutes drive from central Bangkok, to net the big one. The giant Mekong catfish is the largest freshwater fish in the world. But it's hard work for a young lad. <laughs> in the end, it's a job for older brother Justin. Feels like he's about to come in. OK, wind your rod tip down really close to the float, as close as you can, that's it, and real gentle up. This is where your hard work's going to start. You, don't, you won't want to come up. Oh, he's not as big as I thought, but still he's good. This is the giant Mekong catfish. Low. For the species, it's actually quite small. At about 22 kgs, this is small fry, apparently. Hey, if it's 20 kilos, throw it back. Don't bother with a photograph. You know, and you catch 15 of those on a rod a day. Kiwi Mark Doncaster is a fishing guide here. He came to Thailand on holiday six years ago. Fell in love with Thailand, fell in love with the food, the people and everything. In the end, met a fantastic woman and decided to make the jump and move over here. Three years ago, he and wife Kat set up the fishing charter business. Kat was alongside me, learning with me. So we learned from the local Thai people on how to target the species that we want. I did bring in some of the, the New Zealand techniques, the, the big game techniques. Kat, my wife, is actually quite an incredible lady. She's the only professional female fishing guide in Thailand. While the lake is popular with locals too, Mark and Kat rely on tourists for their income. The majority of their clients are Europeans, with the odd Kiwi and Aussie thrown in. A Kiwi might look at this and think, ah, easy pickings. The smaller fish are like shooting, shooting fish in a barrel, real easy. Getting onto the large fish, you've got to look at two days sitting there waiting. And if you're lucky, yeah, you, you pull one out. Mark reckons his best catch was close to 100 kgs. How do they get this big? The reason it's grown so big is the Mekong River. It has to travel up the Mekong to breed. and uh, It's a big, fast-flowing river. And unlike other catfish, these guys have got a big tail. They are all muscle. The, the species tops out at 300 kilos. For Mark, it's a dream lifestyle. I live a very Thai lifestyle, from the food through to uh, where we live. I've probably in many ways stepped away from our Western society and, and gone, gone a little bit native, I suppose. Six-year-old IQ and eight-year-old Mwai have been along for the ride too. And for the first two years, business was great. Last year, this month, we had 29 clients. This month, we're looking at about 12. These are the images we've been seeing of Thailand lately. Throw in the eruption in Iceland, swine flu and the recession, and times have been tough. It's quite scary to be in, this, in the tourism industry right now with Thailand. Authorities in Thailand are acutely aware of the issues. It's not just fishing. Every aspect of Thailand's tourism is taking a hit. Tourism will be taking a hit. However, Thailand's quite a resilient market. Uh, it's a country which has suffered a terrible tsunami. It's suffered political turmoil in the last four years. Bede Corrie's New Zealand's ambassador to Thailand. He believes the market will rebound in time. I think New Zealanders love lots of things about Thailand. I think they love the great beaches. I think they love the food. I think they also like the laid-back lifestyle. Be back. Wait there. Wait, 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 wait. For Mark and Kat, it's a waiting game. They're counting on tourists coming back. It's just when. Very difficult, to be honest. Put a lot of time into it and then to see everything you've worked for start to, to just go down the drain. I'm looking at having to go back and get a serious engineering job in life again. Oh, that fish is bad. But we'll keep Cat on the fishing. It's a lifestyle he doesn't want to give up. 
This is done more for the love of the job as opposed to the monetary side of things. But the love versus the money is starting to run out right now. Well, the fish might be easier to catch. What about a greyhound? Now, you'll remember from Friday night, the gone-for-all-money greyhound Swift Fantasy, the one that seems to be out for a bit of a Sunday stroll and then suddenly decides to light the afterburners. Well, last night, she faced off against Australia's best, one Nelly Noodles, distant relative, actually, and with a similar technique. And ever one for the underdog, Michael Holland couldn't resist a look. Good girl, my love. For her, it always ends the same. A bowl of the good stuff. For them, it always starts the same. <sighs> the nervous sigh. <laughs> the nervous laugh. <laughs> the more raucous offering to disguise the aforementioned nerves. That's why I wouldn't eat. And some nothing chatter to help with, yep, the nerves. I just wish I knew what she was going to do. I really do. No real mystery there, even we, who hadn't heard of Swift Fantasy until last week, know she's destined for a quick trip to the back. I have no doubt she will be right out the back door. You just know that the Swift Fantasy will walk uh, in the early rush. What really counts though, what happens after she goes backwards. A fantasy or a reality? Uh, ask me after. <laughs> At this stage it's a fantasy. It's the improbable, you know. She drops out by such a distance you think, well, it can't happen. Don't know why. Who knows what goes on in the dog's head. You need this race to know where she stands. Yeah, yeah. See how good she really is. $20,000, winner take all. I just wanted to make us proud, that's what I really do. As she's done in her last four audacious back from the dead performances. V6 to V8, and then all of a sudden coming around the back end to the finish line was a V12. To the race then, and the emotions that ride with swift fantasy. Lady to those who know her best. It's ready. Set, and we're off. Uh, getting away nicely here is Bonnie Boucher along with Rasmar and Nelly Noodles right for the play. Big gap in the field. There we go to Swift Fantasy. Off the top they come. Rasmar puts two or three on them. Followed back there by Bonnie Boucher. Nelly Noodles. A lot of work to do there with Swift Fantasy. Come on, lady. Get up here. Two or three back there. Now we go to Bonnie Boucher starting to run there. Now is Nelly Noodles. Swift Fantasy. It's just... Come on, lady. Off down the back they go. I can hear the Rasmar. Screaming, they're yelling. Here comes Swift Fantasy. Nelly Noodles is tailed off the top. They come. Here she comes. Fantasy down the outside. Swift Fantasy gets them nicely. Rasmar, Nelly Noodles, and she's done it. Swift Fantasy. My knees are still shaking, I, my hands are quivering, I just can't believe it, I'm sure I'm going to have no voice tomorrow. What did you say when you finally caught up with her? Um, I think I proposed to her. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did say I love you. <laughs> when she puts on that turbocharger, now I know how good that turbocharger is. Don't know why Michael Holland was smiling. He forgot to put the office bet on. The Twilight Stars are with us tomorrow. That's New Zealand close up.